Hocus Pocus and Frisbee is a lighter trip into the Twilight Zone with plenty of humor and tongue-in-cheek fun. Guided by the steady hand of director Lamont Johnson in his seventh and final season three show, Rod Serling's script, based on an unpublished short story by Frederick Lewis Fox, achieved a tone that Serling tried to hit several times in episodes like Mr. Beavis and Showdown with Rance McGrew. It's not one of the greats, but this was a really enjoyable watch, with the series at its cheesy best. There are several elements that make it work this well, so let's get into it. Somerset Frisbee is the harmonica playing owner of a general store slash gas station in a small rural town. He's known to his friends and patrons as the biggest blowhard around. Frisbee can't help himself but go off over and over about all his different supposed accomplishments. These include, but are not limited to, his status as a war hero, a meteorologist, graduating from 38 major universities, and inventing rear engine vehicles. Two strange men stop to get gas at Frisbee's place and later call out to him with a disembodied voice. Soon, Frisbee is whisked away to a spaceship where inside, the men seen earlier greet him with a whole crew of their fellow extraterrestrials. They admit that they're beings from another world who are looking for the best of humankind and not knowing what a lie is, they consider Frisbee to fit the bill. At first, the yarn spinner is happy to accept their adulation, but he second guesses his position when the aliens say they're taking him to their home planet where he'll be put in confinement with a collection of other exceptional species. Mr. Frisbee is a delightfully dopey character played believably by Andy Devine. I beat them all by 21 seconds. Old Archimedes Frisbee, they called me. Devine's voice was slightly familiar, so it wasn't shocking to see that he played Friar Tuck in Disney's 1973 animated Robin Hood movie. There's a charm and innocence to his portrayal that has you on his side, even when he's telling the most egregious lies. Henry Ford said to me, you are an automotive genius, and I couldn't very well argue with him on account of he was telling the truth. Devine's acting is the biggest reason this installment is so pleasant to watch. Throwing this self-proclaimed old country boy with a big mouth into the Twilight Zone made for some really funny juxtaposed comedy. Seeing him get lifted off the ground by the aliens was hilarious. I love how they speed up the footage and the wires are still visible. Seeing the seams just adds to how endearing this episode was. When Frisbee gets on the ship, things get even better. Milton Selzer and Larry Brightman play the two main aliens with naivete and earnestness. Their unflinchingly straight delivery makes the whole gag function. There seems to be no question that your accomplishments are far and away more extensive than those of any other human being on Earth. Mr. Frisbee, we have a marvelously entertaining Venusian. He sings on eight different pitches simultaneously and accompanies himself with his tail. Two of possibly my favorite moments this season happen when the aliens drop their facade. Frisbee doesn't like that he's being abducted against his will and fights back. My pleasure is to punch you right in the jaw. Upon seeing the aliens' true form, Frisbee faints and wakes up as their prisoner. Surrendering to his fate, he breaks out his harmonica to pass the time and relax. The sound of his playing paralyzes some of the crew and Frisbee takes the chance to escape. The extraterrestrials think his instrument lets out a death sound, so they let him go and leave Earth. Back at his store, Frisbee walks in to see his friends have gathered for a surprise 63rd birthday party. He's given a trophy that names him the world's greatest liar, and when asked to make a speech, Frisbee recounts his experience with the aliens. All his friends erupt in laughter, thinking their pal is just telling another one of his fantastical fictional stories as they continue to celebrate the occasion, and the episode ends. First of all, I love that punch that Frisbee lands on Selzer's character, breaking a shell of his face and revealing his true appearance. I've seen that alien design show up in a few Twilight Zone promotional materials, so it's a decently well-known look. How that little sequence is edited with just a few frames of Selzer's false face before they crack it open is an attention to detail I really got a kick out of. William Tuttle and his makeup team did a great job as usual with the effect. 
My other favorite moment is when Frisbee plays the harmonica and the ridiculous interpretive dance poses the aliens strike before falling over. I was laughing hard at that whole bit. It was the perfect goofy way for Frisbee to escape his situation and a great little payoff from when he played the instrument earlier. Aside from some slightly noticeable damage to the opening shot, unless that was a creative choice for some reason, there's not much else to say about this one. It's not deep or introspective like some of the best zones, but I had a ball re-watching it. Get together with a few friends who would like this sort of thing, and have some fun laughing at how over the top Hocus Pocus and Frisbee is. It proves that you can even find a place to get a chuckle in the Twilight Zone. I gotta get out of here!